viewers. <laughs> my name is Kat, Katharina Giglio, and uh, welcome to my channel. And I want to thank you for all of your likes and all your subscriptions. We've had tons of new subbies, and uh, we so appreciate it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Today I'm going to do another cat chat. Um, I'm expanding um, the cat chat that I did just recently on rejection and criticism and letting go. Today we're going to talk about letting go. We're going to talk about the inner critic. And uh, I'm going to give you some ideas about that and how I deal with it. So uh, I'm going to settle in and we'll be right back. First of all, if you haven't seen that video, um, you might want to check it out because I'm building on that one. Uh, but I wanted to say that on my last cat chat on this, I got so much feedback about criticism. And so I really wanted to talk to you today um, about the difference between criticism and constructive feedback because a lot of people I don't think understand that there is a difference. I, and I was talking about I was talking about criticism. I wasn't talking about constructive feedback. Um, and they're very, very different things. You know, criticism, the definition is, and I'm going to read this for you, um, the definition is the expression or disapproval of someone or something based on perceived faults or mistakes. And the synonyms of criticism are censure, condemnation, denunciation, disapproval, disparagement, fault finding, and attack. Um, now, constructive feedback is a completely different thing, and it is defined by assisting with a technique or a modification of work in order to obtain goals. So on the one side we have attack, and on the other side we have assistance, and there's this wide range in between. So they're at completely different polar opposite views. <clears throat> now I understand that some people think that their constructive criticism is an actual thing, but I think it's an oxymoron. You can't be constructive if you're attacking someone. You just can't. So let me give you a personal example. This is about constructive um, feedback. So many years ago, um, my instructor was coming around the class and I had a painting that had a black background with a focal image right in the front. And when she came over to where I was working, I said, so what do you think about my work? And she looked at it and she said, um, I really like the black background. I think that really makes your focal image pop out. And you want to hear a trick that I use with black? And I nodded, yeah, I want to hear this. And she said, well, sometimes with black, I'll add a little bit of red or a little bit of blue or a little bit of purple to really make it kind of stand out, but not take over. And then the other thing that I do is sometimes I texture the background and then paint it black. And that really really makes it kind of pop. And, oh my gosh, that light bulbs just went off in my head and I thought, wow, that is so cool. So you see, instead of saying that the background was too flat, which it was, and that's why I asked her, I knew there was something wrong with it, but I couldn't put my finger on it. She offered her expertise and she made it sound like, you know, she was offering the secret to me. She was giving me this wonderful little gem and it was special, and she was assisting me in my goals. Now, the other thing I want you to know about offering advice or um, offering assistance, um, definitely giving constructive feedback, is if someone isn't asking you, they can't hear a word you're saying. Okay, so if you're an artist, you know that all artists face rejection. It's just part of being an artist. It's what we do. And the more work I send out, the more rejections I get. Okay? It's just the way it is. And actually, it's wonderful because the more work I send out, the easier it gets for me to deal with rejection. So you want to send work out. You want to get those rejections back because you're also going to get acceptance. So. I got these two pieces of artwork back. Um, I actually sent six pieces and I sent it out to a magazine and they kept four pieces and they sent me back two. Now, I would like to say that I thought, oh, well, they kept four and you know, and so what? But I didn't. My first thought was, well, what's wrong with these pieces and why don't they like these pieces and you know, what was wrong with that? And then I stopped myself and I remembered that criticism or rejection is about them. It's not about me. It's about what the magazine needed. It's about what was editorial. It was about what fit in the magazine. It has nothing to do with me 
or my artwork. Okay, let's talk about the evil inner critic. First of all, does that name mean anything to you? We just talked about criticism, about criticism. What I'd like you to do is to now associate that word criticism with the word attack. Okay, so the inner critic is me attacking me, or it's you attacking you, or your work, or whatever, some piece that you did. All right, so we often learn to criticize, to self criticize from a pattern of abuse. Um, and, you know, it, it may, it's a learned pattern, it comes from teachers, it comes from friends, it comes from parents, it comes from a lot of different places. They may have been well-meaning, but it certainly doesn't serve us now because we have to be on our own side. Um, sometimes it helps to name the inner critic. You know, a long time ago I realized my inner critic sounded a whole lot like my mother. And so I named that voice Carol. And it made it a lot easier for me every time I heard that in my head to think, oh, I don't need to listen to her anymore. <laughs> I'm my own person. I'm, I'm my own cheerleader. I, I know my work is good and I want it to go out there into the world because I'm on my own side and I want to do well in my work. So you can recognize it, you can name it, and then remind yourself, remind yourself that you're condemning yourself and your art. And that's not what you want to do. Letting go and releasing. You know, art. If you ask me how to draw or how to paint or how to sculpt, I'm going to tell you one word, and it's what all artists will tell you. It is practice. You have to practice, practice, practice at anything you do. Even those of us that are born able to draw anything, we still had to practice. It doesn't always come easy, and if we don't do it all the time, we get really rusty. So we have to practice. So dealing with criticism, dealing with rejection, dealing with that that crazy voice in your head. It's just a matter of practice. So, you know, I wish I could give you a magic bullet. I wish I could make it easier for you, but it really is about that. It's about recognizing, catching yourself in that thought or hearing somebody criticize your work and stopping remembering it's about them. Or that voice in your head, you know, is remembering that you're not on your own side and you are going to be on your own side. You're going to tell yourself how great your work is, that you're doing better and better all the time. It's just getting better for you. So what did I do with those two rejected pieces? I brought them into my studio and I set them up on stands and I have to look at them every single day. And it's just like a writer who takes those rejection letters from you know all of her you know book manuscripts that she sends out and just papering her walls with those because it gives you the impetus to go forward to do better and it gives me the opportunity every day to come in and say oh yeah those are those rejected pieces that has nothing to do with me and aren't they great I love those pieces it's not about me I can let it go and I can do new work and I can go forward I can't believe it's time for a chow for now. Um, next time, uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be sharing my technique for making these little fabric books. Um, and uh, I hope you'll join me for that. We're going to be using some fabrics, we're going to be doing some treatments, and we're going to be stitching them together. Uh, they're little concertinas, but they're fabric covered. So I hope I'll see you next time, and chow for now. Mm -hmm.